All right, now I want to go over a little bit about resolution, only because I want to make this series so it fits everybody out in the spectrum of learning, not just the pros, but just something that, you know, the total noobs can understand too. And I want to talk about resolution and the fact that we're doing UVs, okay? So a lot of students ask a lot of questions when it comes down to UVs. There's no doubt about it. Keep in mind, UVs are your making and breaking point to your model. I mean, texturing is important, no doubt about it. Um, Modeling is important. Both those are very easy to do because they're fun to do. But when it comes down to UVs, nobody really likes to do them. Um, and if you do, that's cool too. But I would say that most of the students that I meet usually uh, memory lock themselves out of UVs. So that means um, here, let, let's look at a character that's kind of complex in the fact that, you know, he's made of many, many, many parts, okay? And those many parts would never be able to house that much resolution if I just went with this one square 2048. So let's put 2048 in perspective. I have, this is a 2048 map, and here is what was maybe... I would say six years ago, maybe five, six years ago, we had a map that was 1024. And 1024 was the logical choice for choosing a texture for a video game character. So this is a 1024 map. And now today's industry standard is about 2048. And sooner or later, it's going to be 4096. What 2048 really means is you know, pixels, 2048 by 2048. And this one is pixels of 1024, 24. So you times that by two, you get 2048. Now, that means 2048 could house four 1024 maps and still run at the same power as just one 2048 map. But you got to understand, if a character has normal maps and spectral maps, that's a lot of file juggling. Sure, it all fits into the same realm of memory. So if I have four normal maps that are 1024 each, that's still the same as having one normal map that's 2048, etc. and so forth. But again, that's a lot of maps to be looking at as far as the character, dropping them onto the surface, and et cetera, and so forth. Here, with this one, um, as far as the skull goes, all that just is very far ahead of the future because the skull is just one single map, 2048. If it had a lot more parts, pieces, if it was a whole skeleton, then I would have to start worrying about making more and more uh, UV like layouts. But I do not have to worry about that. Still, it's nice to know how things work. Like later on down the road, it, as you progress through 3D to figure out what you're going to do if the character gets too big or too, too detailed. So in this case, all I have to do is very simply put all my pieces back together. Okay, so there I zeroed them all out. And then I'm gonna join all the pieces together into one. Do this in object mode. And then what I can do is go over here, hit A, U, unwrap. Okay, now again, let's talk about resolution. The teeth have a lot more detail than the skull itself. The skull is pretty much strapped, okay? That means like this right here 
cannot grow anywhere outside the square bounds. Okay, so it's taking up that entire square area. There is many UV tricks. In fact, I can do mirrored UVs if I wanted to, and then cut that resolution in half. Now the problem with doing that is you might sacrifice some edge of, uh, there might be anomalies that show up every, from time to time. We're gonna work with this being the norm, how it's just stretched across. But if I ever, and I think I will kind of show mirrored UVs here using this example here in maybe a later lesson. But for right now, we're going to use this as a flat planar type of map. Also, the teeth. The teeth have way more resolution or need way more resolution than what is required here. So, and there's some space here to be taken up. I'm going to take advantage of this. Okay, let's go and, uh, and turn this feature off, sync UVs. Click on my mesh, hit A. When sync UVs is on, basically you can't do anything that uh, requires moving of the shells or grabbing them. You can pinpoint their location, but you can't move them. So turning that feature off and then coming back in here and highlighting all your faces equals this. I can hit L, and if I hold Shift and L, I can highlight these planes, or uh, shells, sorry. And then I'm just going to scale those up. S on the keyboard allows me to scale. G allows me to move around. This is part of the jawbone, so here I'm just going to scale that back down. But these, since they they require so much more detail than the other stuff, I'm going to try to scale those and move them around until I get them fit within the system and have barely any room to breathe. These two are the most important because they're the outer shells. These around, put this one right here. And I can do this all day long, really. So these I might want to go like this. If you ever play Tetris, this is Tetris. And my idea here is to get these as big as possible. Okay, and I think I majorly got that under control. These two, I want them the same scale, but the teeth, yeah. So it's very important to know that things that have the same type of material, I, I divide it that way in my mind. Um, the skull's skull and his jawbone, those are a weaker form of bone, yet they are the same type of bone. The teeth are a different form of bone altogether, okay, with enamel if it's not rotted. But the teeth also have these little cracks and crevices where the rest of the skull does not have those. It sort of has a little bit of them, but not as detailed as the teeth. 
That's why the actual skull and its jawbone and its interior mouth are all relatively the same scale. And how do I know that? Well, I'm just going to give you a little heads up on this. You're, you're, you're going to find out that there's people out there that use these little tiny squares. Okay, so if you look here, I have a pattern. And here's these little squares. These squares mean something. They're called uniformed squares. So let me use them and kind of show you what they mean. Is 1024 or 24 bit. Jump right back into Blender and I'm going to have the faces highlighted and I'm going to go into image, open image, and open those UVs. And then I'll go into texture mode. Make sure they are actually on there. Hmm. Okay, and then I also have to switch this to textured. Okay, now let's look at the size of the squares. The size of the squares on the jaw compared to the size of the squares on the actual skull are about the same, except for areas like the eyes. So let's look at that over here. And you'll notice that the eyes start to lose resolution right there. And do they need it? In fact, they don't. In the back of the, in the, back of the eyes, there's very little detail. But the rest is all very uniformed. You can see that there might be a little bit of a, a slight ununiformity right about here. But other than that, for being unwrapped, not bad. So the smaller the squares, the larger the resolution. All right, now that we know that and how to gauge it using this checker pattern, we should be able to go to the next step, which is sculpting on it. But you have to have the UVs done ahead of time beforehand because it's really hard to go back. All right, please proceed to the next video.